On the way down, I had my seats on. Me too. And then you get out. <laughs> Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, Graydon um, is going to be late, but he will be here this evening. He's got had another meeting because we changed the date. Um, so we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any students? Do you want to state your names? Um, Olivia Harvey. Jose Mirbo. All right. Just make sure you get your papers signed afterwards. Welcome. Okay. We have the approval of the minutes, and this is the September 18th. Motion to approve is written. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And then we also have the approval of the minutes from October 2nd. Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, unless there's questions or anything for CSE, CPSE, do we have a motion to accept the report as submitted? I'll make a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're up to public comment. Is there any public comment? Hello. Thank you. Um, I'm actually here on behalf of New York Farm Bureau, and um, New York Farm Bureau has a promotion and education committee, and in Farm Bureau, we call that ProEd. And I'm the contact person for the ProEd programs for Delaware County. And so my assignment is to reach out to all the school districts in Delaware County, kind of let you know what we offer um, um, as hopefully helpful to the district. Um, for anybody that's not familiar with Farm Bureau, um, a portion of the Delaware County mission statement reads, Delaware County Farm Bureau gives farmers and non-farmers alike the opportunity to be part of an organization dedicated to supporting and enriching agriculture. It provides an opportunity for individuals interested in the food system, land issues, and rural living to join together and make their voices heard. We are active in a broad range of issues that concern every New Yorker from taxation, conservation to local food availability. We believe that a strong, viable agricultural industry is beneficial not only just to our economy, but to our local communities and our consumers. 
And more specifically, the number one reason I'm here is I just received the information on the Farm Bureau Scholarship. And I want to make sure that that word gets out to our students. Um, there's kind of a misconception like you have to be a dairy farmer, you know, your family has to be a dairy farmer to qualify. That's not true. Um, it's for high school seniors who want to continue their education in a career somehow related to the diverse agricultural industry. And they've identified 300 plus careers that are called agriculture related. So it's pretty broad. Um, they, they, the student needs to live, work on a, live or work on a farm or be involved with agriculture via any avenue. And that can mean if you have a student from the village, but they're in FFA, mm -hmm. they qualify. If they're in 4-H, um, just find a link to agriculture and push that and get their application in. <laughs> nice. There is a local uh, portion of the scholarship uh, district. Um, it's $100 for the winner on the district level. But what happens then is then the district promotes them forward to the state level. And the scholarships on the state level are $1,000, $1,200, and $1,500. So very nice. th it's very good. Um, the information can be obtained on the website, uh, www.nyfb.org. And I've um, attached an actual copy of the application. If, can I yep, pass it? That okay. to me. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the second part of what I'm supposed to do is to let you all know that uh, Farm Bureau also has free educational materials for teachers uh, to use in their classroom. And just, I mean, there's a lot out there also available to find out about on the website. But um, just a few of what we have, there's an interactive multimedia program on the history of New York agriculture that's available to seventh grade social studies teachers. Um, an ag facts school calendar that was developed for third grade classrooms. And then there's this really neat program that, um, it, it, it's really fun. We did it in our workshop when I went to Albany to learn about this. Um, it's called The Journey from Orchard to Table, and it's a 30-minute interactive lesson. And what they have is a uh, basket of props, and then people play roles um, on all the different facets, from the grower to a scientist to, you know, a produce manager in the grocery store, you know, mm -hmm. just to show how the produce goes along the chain. Um, they have a program called Feed the Hungry, for third and fourth grade students to plant, harvest, donate to the food bank and cook. And I thought that might fit with the program. Uh, Mr. Snyder and I spoke briefly, um, and I told him Farm Bureau would really be very interested in helping. Um, just let us know what you need from us. Um, in addition, there's a kind of a, another part of the Farm Bureau organization, which is called the New York Farm Bureau Foundation. And um, they have a program which is actually going on right now in Poughkeepsie. Um, and it is called the Food and Farm Experience and it's for high school and middle school counselors. And um, like I said, they, they say that, you know, they've identified over 300 agriculture related careers. And this program strives to get the school counselors to be very current with what the career possibilities are. Right. Look what the for opportunities it. are, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did meet with uh, counselors last year here. Um, they, they do this every year. Um, the applications for the program go in in March. Uh, Farm Bureau pays for the lodging, uh, food, um, all the transportation to any of the workshops or tours. They ask the school district to provide the transportation, getting them to the site. Um, every year it's in a different part of New York State. They're looking, um, and it's a two-day conference. Um, because they found it's hard for some of the schools for the counselors to be away for two days in the fall, um, it usually happens like this time of year. They're doing it right now, it's October. 
um, they're they're going to next year try doing three one day um, workshops to do the same thing but more condensed. So nice. if I if I can it anyway uh, help you provide anything, um, just let me know. I know you and guys I know, know you how to find me. You provided your the website, but um, locally, if a teacher or somebody's, we can contact you yes. with your yes. current contact information, or do you yeah. go by a different email? <coughs> yes, yeah. yeah. um, you can you can reach me at the Country Connection. You have yeah. have it. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Okay. thank you. Can thank you just you. share your name for those watching oh, at home? I'm sorry, I'm Joyce Bishop. I assume <laughs> yeah. everybody knows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Well, most do. Just to... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. I will sign in. I usually forget that part. I have a question, Rhonda. Sure. Who now is Thank you, um, the director of our physical education and health department that Andy Gates now has left? Who's I haven't heard one appointed? We don't have one appointed as yet, but we're working on that. That's one of the areas that we still have to do. I just actually. Uh, you know we're out of compliance, so we don't have one, right? Oh, yes, I know we're out, but I also know that, we've, that we're that we working at it, so we're okay. working at it. But, okay. you know, we I was just going to share with the board that we just got our DASA person as well, our Dignity mm -hmm. uh, for All Students person, just got that taken care of as well. So, you know, we have a, a couple that are hanging out there, and that was one of them. Also, I tried to email into your Board of Education to ask how many, if you guys know how many are going on the New York City trip, but it got kicked back and said that I wasn't an avid u um, user or whatever. I got this whole email back, so not sure for it was not, not working. That. Yeah, I know you, you didn't. Look so it. that was sent last Thursday, but I'm wondering if you know at this point how many of the board members are headed to New York City for the conference. I don't believe any of us no. are. Well. No, no, nobody's going to go. No, no. Okay. Not this year. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay. I guess I'm turning it over to you now. Board of Education Recognition. So, uh, as some of you know, uh, the week of October 22nd through 26th has been designated uh, as uh, Observance uh, School Board Recognition Week. And you all have some nice gifts in front of you that um, that some of them were done by the fourth grade, right? Fourth grade. And some by staff. And some by staff. So uh, when you get an opportunity to take a look at those and open them up and uh, and enjoy those, please do. Um, they're small gifts, but they are well intended. They are huge as far as the appreciation that people have for you for your time. Um, I do have some uh, certificates to hand out, but before I do that, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I just thought there were a couple items that were pretty uh, interesting. There are uh, 5,104 board seats in New York State. Um, and uh, it's skews a little bit male, but not by much. 54% male, 50, 46% female. And 56% uh, of board members have served five years or fewer. So again, it, it's mm -hmm. pretty even, you know, 44% 44, 44 have six years or more. And according to this uh, document from New York State School Boards Association, uh, on average, school board members spend at least um, uh, six hours a week on board activities. I know that that goes up and down. Um, if you're doing interviews and things of that sort and going through budget time, it can be a lot more. Or uh, for those folks who are going to stay after tonight's meeting and maybe do a little policy work, it might be a little more as well. But uh, uh, then, uh, and uh, that's all done through uh, your kindness because you don't get any compensation for that. And for that, we appreciate it very much. So uh, that said, we have uh, school board recognition uh, certificates for uh, each one of you. And we're going all the way over here to Paul first. <laughs> Is that because he changed his seat? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so guess what? Now I'm going back this way. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Thank you, sir. Brandon will be here. Marilyn. Thank you. Barney. Thank you. Yes, 
say Bush. And Dr. Reasoning. And Rhonda, so thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Which, how many years has this been now? Going on 28. Eight years. He's out of that 44, well, it said 44% and more. <laughs> yep, he's part of that. Yep, definitely part of that. Well, thank you very much. I love this. This is the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. These are so nice. Thank you. All right, we have um, possible discussion items. Um, the policy committee will be meeting, of course, after the regular meeting. And then um, Butch had a couple of questions on the workers' compensation, and that is in your folder. They just sent a paper around. Doesn't really amount to anything. I mean, it says <clears throat> you can all read it. Just wants to know if we're okay with uh, providing the report to the full board with just a date change. And like they, it really doesn't make any difference if they send it or not. Mm -hmm. We still get it. <clears throat> um, I said something to Tim. The 9th of uh, November is the next. Um, meeting and supper. Anybody interested in going down? <clears throat> um, we'll take a car down. But just let us know so Corey can get information into them. Yeah, so if anybody wants to check their calendars and let Corey know, um, that might be something. Where, I think. Um, where's the meeting, Butch? Huh? Where's the meeting? In the Binghamton Binghamton. Boys Club. They put on a good meal. I could probably meet you there. I'm not that far away. That's fine. That's you... good, yeah. Right, I don't have a, a form yet to turn in. Yeah. That'll be coming. Okay. And um, if another board member, I know we used to send two board members, you know, so if somebody else. Um, it's set up. All board date. members are on the committee. Mm -hmm. Anybody that wants to go can go. Marilyn's gone a couple times. All right, so as long as we're comfortable with the current role, then we don't have to don't submit have to anything. anything. Okay. No. And is everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think so too. Well, thank you, Butch. Okay. Is there any other discussion items? Anybody? Um, I know last board meeting um, there was a suggestion of having public comment at the end of the meeting instead of at the beginning. Um, I don't know what anybody else's personal feelings are. I tend to like it at the beginning of the meeting. So this way, if anybody wants to contribute opinions or information, additional information before a vote has taken place, I find that find that more beneficial. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are. <coughs> if there's nobody's opposed, I, you know, I guess we'll keep it at the beginning of the meeting. Like you're going to have situations that <clears throat> You could, there's no win win. Mm -hmm. There's going to be sometimes the comments before the meeting will be good. Then there's going to be times that you're going to have somebody that wants to comment after the meeting. Mm -hmm. There's just not going to be a, we're not going to be 100% on anything we do. So, and additionally, and sometimes we have different items that take longer for discussion or, or things like right. that, where <clears throat> if somebody wants to come and provide input, it may be advantageous for them to be able to do that at the outset. And then if they have to leave, prior to or anything so I mean right and then we uh, always I mean, have you know at the next meeting they can bring right. something back to us we're always open to that so all right well then we will leave that as is all right um and then the correspondent information of course was um 6a that was the workers compensation so there again just check your schedule for Friday November 9th we were up to 7A, Links 20 presentation. Um, Ms. Hartman and Ms. Oh, assume that Mr. Lapar is not doing he, that one. He unfortunately couldn't make it okay. tonight because of the, the change. Okay. So, um, you want me up there? Oh, well, I can do it. Um, Mr. Snyder was part of the team, was one of the team members as well. Um, so uh, we just wanted to present you with the 
Lynx 20 plan. Um, this really is a plan that um, a lot of us got together and what we did was kind of condense all of our plans. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, what we tried to do was consolidate the um, recommendations from the state, DTSDEs, um, and incorporate the board goals into that plan. It includes the professional development plan. It includes the plan for technology. Um, so there were a lot of plans that were all brought together and put into one document. Um, and that is something that we've been working on and uh, we do this every year. Um, and so we wanted to um, just remind you of the, of the goals. I don't really want to read PowerPoint. <laughs> but I know you can all read. <laughs> and this was the um, plan that we were kind of sticking with the three objectives to keep it simple. And once we accomplish those tasks and get yes. that down, then we would move on and add another. Not to add on too many that you could never meet that. Meet right. Yep. But yeah. Please read through that. If you have questions, we will be glad to answer them. So these were the, the three objectives, the three things that we could build on from last year. Um, the goals, they're still very much um, active. Uh, we want to build on what we achieved last year. We don't really want to change the goal or change the direction um, because we want to make sure that everything, you know, we get used to um, some of the changes and, and we become very solid in our approach to instruction. Mm -hmm. Explicit instruction is something where um, the, the teachers will um, demonstrate to a child that they do a, a kind of a, like an I do it I demonstrate to you um, and then we do it together we do the same thing again and then there's a slow release so the children acquire <laughs> um, and it's uh, called explicit instruction explicit direct instruction and that's something that we're working on mm -hmm. in the classrooms um, the, the explicit instruction part of it is really quite simple to do um, where the problem comes is when knowing when to release a child to, for that independent work. So that's that's really the, you know something that we're working on at the moment. Um, we're very much into data uh, and collecting data, and we have a, a data team, and we're looking at a, um, a, a, a system that's going to help mm. us with that. Um, and then of course the emotional social needs. That was very much um, on the, uh, in the minds of everybody this year. So, mm -hmm. um, so we're working with uh, Dr. Jennifer Bashon, um, who's coming in to work with teachers. have a copy of the links plan um, and if it's approved by the board then we require your signature and we're good to go. Wonderful. Any questions for the yeah. I think that um, third um, objective there is very important, especially in the same way. That's good. Yeah an example of that is I found a note laying on the floor and after reading it took it to the guidance counselor. Yep. We are following up with that check. Wonderful. So, but trying to stay on top of what all is going on. Yep. In this day and age, need to. Mm -hmm. A lot of little ones out there that need help. But when you see hashtag such and such, and you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Any <clears throat> questions on that? 
Okay, additions to the agenda. We have uh, three additions to the agenda. Two of them will be on the consent agenda. Um, we're adding an additional substitute appointment to item 9C, uh, substitute food service helper, who is already a substitute, I believe, teacher aide in the building. Um, we also have a request for an unpaid leave of absence from a teacher. And those would both be on the consent agenda. So we're adding item 9E. <clears throat> and then we have one non-consent agenda. It's an old business item. These appointments are usually done at reorg and we needed a committee member for our audit committee. I'm, from I'm the sorry, community. a community member yeah. because Mr. McGuire is now working here so he can no longer be our community member. So Sandy Gregory has agreed to do that. Excellent. Wonderful. All right, so our consent agenda, um, we've got our financial reports then of course our appointments, um, the temporary appointment for Pamela Berzee, uh, substitute teacher aid and, and substitute school monitor for Marianne Jacobs. We have our athletic recommendations. And that's it. And then the, the two, and then additions, the two additionals, mm -hmm. um, Brenda McDonald, substitute food service, and then the um, unpaid leave. Unpaid leave. All right. Are any questions on any of that? Do we have a motion? Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. All right, new business. Um, I typically, this is ex accepting donations. I typically read all these um, donations, but um, because they are for um, the same purpose, it totals um, $1,115. And this is in memory of Valerie Vogel to the Townsend Elementary School Library. So I think that is absolutely amazing. Very nice. Yep, mm -hmm. very nice. So do we have a motion to accept the donations? Motion to accept. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Carried. Okay, and then of course the links, um, <coughs> the adoption of the links plan 20. Move it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And then we have the um, 10C, the emergency appointments. Um, this is for Christopher Munyon um, as the position of head cook, as well as the on-site coordinator. And then uh, Christine Ledson, mm -hmm. food service helper. We have a motion to approve those. I'll make a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. All right, and we are up to, and then this would go to um, the old business. This, of course, is with uh, Sandy Gregory as the audit committee. There's any questions on that? Motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. All right, and then um, policy update. That was... Um, this was a requirement from New York, New York State that this was kind of, this is an emergency appointment. Yeah, uh, and they didn't give us an awful lot of time with this, to be quite honest with you. I mean, it was, uh, it actually came to us um, around the first of the month or just after the first of the month. And, and they're, they're actually, they were actually asking that boards all around the state approved this by October 9th, which there was no way we were going to get to that. I mean, and I'm sure that a lot of other boards didn't as well, um, but we are trying to make a good faith effort and uh, get this done as quickly as we possibly can. Now, I know that the, that the usual procedure for the board is to have two readings. If we were to take two readings, we'd be several, we'd be a couple months down the road and we would be um, 
in a much more violated position, right. violating position than the state is asking us to do. So what on the advice of our attorney, what we're uh, offering, and I hope that you had a chance to read through the, 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 the policy and regulation and the um, uh, accompanying information. What, what we're asking is that in deference to the request from, from uh, the state that we approve this policy um, as it is, uh, and then still go through the um, the walkthrough of it like we would normally. Like tonight, actually, this coincidentally, this policy appears in this book for tonight that we're going to be that we're going to be talking about. So it's a little bit cart before the horse, but we're asking that you approve it tonight, and then we still go through and, and consider it for uh, revision and formal adoption again uh, at a later date, uh, you know, in, in accordance with what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the resolution, of course, um, as stated, is a mandate from New York State and a recommendation from our school attorney. This is um, number 0110, sexual harassment. Number 0110, of course, um, E, sexual harassment exhibit, and R, sexual harassment regulations. Do we have a motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. So then um, with putting that into place, um, our next one would be to delete the obsolete policy of our old sexual harassment. Do we have a motion to delete that? Make it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. All Thank right, you. we are up to administrative remarks. So I, uh, uh, we uh, talked about having some of the other department uh, folks here to uh, give a report to the board and I have to say I could not get quite everybody um, for, um, for example, our food service person is a BOCES employee and she's happy to come, but it didn't work out tonight. So she, she will come at another date to, to give you that information um, and, and present for you. And Mike is here to support the uh, links folks. So he's not going to talk tonight <laughs> um, unless you have a question for him, of course, I'm sure. But we do have we have Rick over there, and we have Tracy, and we have uh, John to talk to us about um, a couple of things going on in their respective uh, areas. So, Tracy, you want to start? No, <laughs> I know he doesn't. <laughs> Tracy, you want to take my job? I wanted I wanted to have a PowerPoint, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> Three to five. Three to five. <laughs> Three to five well, like, you, like you heard him say, three to five, but I'm going to try. <laughs> <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just start over with a little bit of overview. Uh, Butch probably has heard this. A, a lot of you as other board members probably haven't heard um, some of these numbers I'm going to throw at you. Um, our, our district right now is we cover 174 square miles. That's our school district as a whole, and that's what busing-wise we, we cover completely. We average around 180 to 200,000 miles a year. That's the regular runs, special ed runs, our sports, everything that, that um, goes with a vehicle for the district. Um, we have 13 runs, three special ed runs, two BOCES runs. Those are pretty much just the numbers of the, the, the base of it. Um, starting this year, um, Mark Duper isn't isn't here tonight, but um, we had some some problems with cars traveling in, in front of the buses in the morning when we were uh, unloading. So with Mark's help, we, we figured out what we we're going to do. And right now we're we're hopscotching buses. The first bus that comes in and unloads, then goes down here to the to the uh, entrance where the, the student drop off is. It stops with the red lights on. Next bus pulls in, they unload, they go take their spot. And we continue on that way. <clears throat> We're going to get some new signage. We have some signage coming for that um, so people know where to go and what time <coughs> they can come through there and what time they can't. We have signage at the other end at Maple Street. But at this end, we just don't have anything. We're going to get, get some up there so people understand it. We'll see how that goes. And maybe we'll continue with the buses. Maybe we won't have to. But, I mean, it's worked out 
so far so good. My only concern was early whether some of the later buses getting in here um, that still have to go to the elementary school, the kids could get there on time for their breakfast and stuff, but I don't think we've, we've had an issue at, as of this time. <clears throat> um, driver situation, everyone has heard and everyone that sees anything, I'm sure you probably get it in your board uh, pamphlets that you get from from state ed and stuff. Drivers are are tough to they're they're tough to get anymore. Uh, we lost two subs this year only because their jobs changed and the hours work out so they can't help us at the normal times when we need them mornings and afternoons. They're still able to help us out with extra trips and and other things like that. But uh, that was a that was a, a a big loss. In the past, we've done dual purpose hiring, custodial bus driver. And within the last couple of years, I don't know, we've just, something's just gotten away from it prior to that. You know, like we had Danny, Bill Prem, both of them come in at, you know, the custodial bus driver section. And <clears throat> I'm just hoping we can get back to that just cause it helps the everyone out as a, as a whole, uh, especially at my end, <laughs> cause there's someone I can, I can go to and it's, and it's, it's tough right now. New York State's changed their CDL procedure um, for road tests. <clears throat> it used to be, depending on what, what the position was, like school bus drivers had taken for road tests, they didn't have to know what the fan belt was. They didn't have to know the alternator, the power steering. They didn't have to know any of that. They pretty much do their pre-trip, know the lights, know the procedures, go out for a drive, and, and come back. Now New York State has changed it. The federal government actually changed it a while ago. New York State's just catching up. <clears throat> a road test now to go, uh, you have to, they have to know under the hood. They have to know the brake cans, the brake hoses. They have to know the slack adjusters. And, and most of the people as bus drivers will never have to deal with that or ever see that. <clears throat> but now as a whole, they're, they're getting all, everybody in, under the same blanket and they have to know that which is tough because now the training that I have to do with them is so much more extensive and it just takes takes that much longer. As we get into 2020 federal regs, boom, <laughs> it's totally going to change. <clears throat> CDL drivers, and this is all of them, before you can even go apply for your permit, you have to have a 40-hour certified course by approved trainer, and approve facility before you can even go sign up to even get your permit. <clears throat> then we'll, along with that, everything else comes along with it after that, that we have to do. SCD has stuff that, that drivers have to do within the first year, another 30 hours that they have to, to take. Um, so it's in 2020, we're only a year and a half, or a year and two months away from that uh, happening. And, uh, just something we're gonna end up dealing with. We had, uh, we're gonna be having our second emergency drill of the year, uh, November 3rd, November 2nd. Uh, we have to have three a year. We had our first one within the first week of school, and then we'll have our third one at the, uh, in the spring, uh, in April. The emergency drill is a procedure. I mean, it's all set out. We go over the stuff with the, with the kids on the buses. I also send stuff to the principals at each one of the schools. They send it out to the teachers who go over it with the kids in the class classrooms. But with the kids right there on the bus, we pull up out front. <clears throat> we all go out an emergency exit and, and we have it set so they understand what's going on. The, the stuff in the emergency drill goes over with them. If a, if a driver's uh, incapacitated, if there's smoke, if there's fire, if there's a chance of a, of a collision, all that stuff, it all goes over with it. And uh, I ain't going to say that they retain all of it, but at least they've heard it and, and, and they've seen it. And hopefully they can react in the correct way. You know, we show them where the emergency brake is. We show them where the key is, um, stuff like that. So um, we just I just completed a DMV audit, which had no deficiencies and all the records were complete. Uh, they do that every three years, and they go through everything. They've changed it this year. Now everything is, has to be scanned and sent into somebody. They used to send the uh, the uh, um, 
people right to your your place and they'd scour your your records for a day or two but now we scan everything which we scan everything anyway after that we do the testing and, and all the the stuff with the uh, drivers so it was very easy on our behalf to it was in a PDF and we just send it to them and then they check it all off and I got the email back saying there's no deficiencies and everything was good so that's all I have <coughs> Any Quite questions? The uh, bus drivers, do they have to have a physical now too before they can go get their permit, like the regular CDL? Well, I always send them for that anyway. I mean, it's, it, I hear, I have to make sure everybody can be a bus driver before I put yeah, all the I time know. and effort into them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we, I always send them beforehand anyway. They're, they're drug tested and they're, they're, they have a physical before I even do anything because <clears throat> so, I mean so many times you get into the middle of it and all of a sudden something pops up medically or something and you've you know okay. put the time into it and I I can't have them there so other than that <clears throat> we've seen snow this morning <laughs> I was gonna call Larry just to call <laughs> but, I, but I didn't <laughs> so that's coming soon mm -hmm. any other questions Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I know some of you couldn't make it to the um, bus driver appreciation, oh, yeah. um, but it was it's always a really nice event. Um, the bus drivers were sitting around and the elementary um, select, select chorus, that third and fourth, second, is it? And third. second and third, <clears throat> and they sang songs and they actually sang a song that Rosie Green had wrote really? and it was the cutest thing. You know, so it was really nice. They had a nice treat with that. She the tune was over the, the river and through the woods. Yeah, yeah, over the river and through yeah, the woods. And I asked her, I said, where's your poem? She goes, I don't have a poem this year. Mm -hmm. you know, I just don't. And uh, then she surprised us with the song. So, yeah, that it was, was very good. nice. Very yeah. nice. So. John. Okay. Tracy didn't save me any donuts. I failed to make it to the meeting the bus driver appreciation the other day i got busy talking to leah going over the new mm -hmm. finance program and i forgot <laughs> so <laughs> um you know the the winter season is upon us now uh, you know we had all the got school all ready for the beginning of school uh fall sports has went real well um mike tweedy is now he's in the process of kind of putting all the fields and the sports equipment to bed other than soccer and football who are still going and i hope they continue to keep going for quite some time um heat wise our our boilers in this building are in especially good shape with the newer condensate boilers the ones at townsend school are a older version they're a flex tube boiler um they're 16 years old now they're starting to require some maintenance we, you know, I've got uh, Glenn from Perkins Automated Heating here yesterday, and he'll come back to some parts. We have things like the uh, gas valves and the gas train are getting weak. Um, uh, the igniters and, and stuff like that are getting weak. So we just don't want to go through the winter and have to put up with that a boiler down here and there when it's zero or something like that. So that's getting taken care of. And I also like to point out that we most a lot of schools I know of spend thirty thousand dollars a year on boiler maintenance. Well, we're lucky enough here to have a person like Brett Wood at the Townsend School and Rich Miller here at the high school who is very well versed in boilers, and we spend about three thousand dollars a year, about one tenth wow. of what most school districts spend on them. And it you know it hasn't come back to bite us at all because we do have a guy like Glenn you know on standby. I'm sure Tracy knows Glenn. He's probably been down there to work on his boiler, and a lot of times. He will go down to the bus garage and get uh, the one going down there if it um, needs it. But usually, you know, Rich usually does that. Um, we've got a couple of new PTAC units we're going to replace in the high school principal's office, high school secretary's office. They're just units that were, I believe, they were dated in 1982 or 1983. They've just they're way beyond their useful life. We usually figure about 10 to 15 years with those. And they are what 35 something like that um i got a quote on those from a company and it was going to be eleven thousand eight hundred dollars to replace those uh, we are going to do that in-house and we will be about twenty five hundred dollars so it's a great amount of savings. <coughs> um
yeah, the equipment, snow removal equipment, and all that equipment is getting ready. We're, you know, hopefully won't need it anytime real soon, but I'm sure we will. <clears throat> um, currently, I have two full-time employees, the o and staff off on medical. Uh, we are covering that very well. We've got um, one part-time employee who is working basically full-time right now to take care of that. And the rest of the crew, um, Dave Mack is our temporary night supervisor now um, with our supervisor, with a, our supervisor being off and everything. And Dave's doing a great job in the crew and they're, they're really working together real well and getting things done by being kind of being short staffed by one. So that's all going quite well. Um, the changing stalls in the high school boys locker room are now complete and anybody would like to see them, uh, Rich installed those and they're just, you know, a professional job. Look, uh, Larry went down and saw one of them, I believe, and they're just very, very clean, very nice. You, you couldn't good. expect any better. Um, I had Henderson and Johnson here on the roofs the other day. They were the contractor that installed the foam roofing and they're still quite a bit of it under warranty. We have four small leaks. We believe we have them taken care of now. Good. So, you know, it's just going to be a, probably an ongoing thing because of the age of the roofs and everything. But as long as they're under warranty, they'll, they will come and take care of such things. Um, you know I had the opportunity. John, do you know how much longer they're on warranty? Uh, we have uh, roofs that are going to run out and 2020 2022 and 2030 i believe i i think those that might not be totally accurate but that's pretty much the gist of things but we should be thinking about 2020 at least for yes yeah the roofs we had that he was patching the other day um it was monday or tuesday he came they were the ones that are gonna it's 2020 or 2022 or something like that thank you um, there are the foam, that's the foam roofing, and um, that seems to be the least uh, durable of all of them, because what happens is I, I think just, especially the summers we've been having with the heat and everything, they basically, they um, blister up and they split, you know, just kind of volcano-like, yep. and um, it's, it's just an ongoing thing. I do it myself, I go up myself, and we take care of the Rich and I and Brett too, at Townsend, we take care of all the roofing, all the roof drains, and we use um, mm -hmm. a clear uh, silicone patching on them that any place we see, we treat it with that, and hopefully that's gonna hold places it has. And then when he was here the other <coughs> day, there was a couple spots that it hadn't held good, so he did it with a, with a better material. Mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate enough to go to the School Facilities Management Conference, October 30th through, or September 30th through October 3rd, and in Saratoga, and it, it's quite an experience to go up there. You, we have about 320 um, school facilities related vendors there in their booths and everything, and it, it's quite a nice deal. And I was able to meet up with some um, door hardware people, for example, that um, I've actually, the guy came yesterday and uh, door handles and lock sets and stuff like that. That's kind of an ongoing thing. Um, as anything else, when they get a certain amount of age on them, they seem to um, break down, you know, give up the ship and you have to keep replacing them. Um, we're going to try him. It's a much cheaper in price product it seems to actually be a better product and make in the way they're made and everything. Um, I was, had the opportunity to go to some school security classes. Um, I know, you know, Rick, of course, he's, he's the uh, school safety officer and everything. And you know, I talked to him over, over it and everything. And we seem to be ahead of the curb in a lot of ways. And, school and our school security you know their camera system and our entry system and and things like that and i also went to a class on uh, energy performance contracting that would be a thing that you know i'll discuss with the facilities committee at a later date you know it's really something we 
you know, could get into uh, that would be a very cheap for the district to do. Since we do, as I spoke about the unit events and school being 20 and 30 and 35 years old, usually the usable life of those are 10 to 12 years, 15 years at the top when we're getting double out of many of them. And I guess that's about it. Any questions of anybody? I have a comment. Um, uh, Graydon and I had come over during the summer and you had taken us through the gym so we could, you know, had seen the gym floor right after it was done. Yes. Looked beautiful. We were in there for the scholastic achievement and I was I was quite impressed with how bright it was. Yes. It just looked really nice. What we did is not this summer, the summer before we painted the ceiling in the gym and we painted it with a semi gloss white paint and that seemed to bring out the brightness a lot in it. We had a, a couple of summer workers that did that. One of them was um, Nick Kilmer, and he kind of took it to heart and really did a nice job on it. And along with our staff, you know, you know, actually um, helping out and kind of ramrodding that project. And then we did the gym floor this year, and that was a quite a project to do. We we got it done by the right people, I believe, and they did the right job. And I really can't wait to go in there to the first basketball game and go up in the stands and sit and see and listen to the comments of the people and the way they react to that. It's, it it's something nice. that you only see in like mm -hmm. college gyms. Yeah. It really is. And I'm super proud of that. And, you know, super proud of the staff, the O&M staff, the, the way they really buckle down and work. And, you know, it's just it's the way it should be. And, you know, That's and nice. thank you all for, you know, the board and the administration and the public for their support of my staff. Thank you, John. Thank yep. you. Well, I'll leave this. You you can pass this around. This is the conference that went to the name of the power of communication. And um, all the workshops, I went to every workshop that I could possibly go to, <laughs> you know, and it's just something a lot you, of information from it's the conferences. terrific amount of information yeah. I was like oh, at least a week I'd go in my office sit down I'd write something down that I forgot yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you sir yeah Rick. good evening oh, I'll oh. keep it short and sweet just over what we've done the last couple weeks I do plan on coming in and giving a much more thorough presentation on our smart schools mm -hmm. money our door access the cameras and all the safety features we've done you guys really don't know the half of it, so we got to get in here and, and let you guys in on it because it's some phenomenal stuff. So we'll just go over what we've done the last couple weeks. Uh, let's start with the hub, Townsend, and Mr. Mike Snyder. We uh, worked with a company named Pre uh, Presentation Concepts to install a new audio video um, presentation system. So before we used to wheel a cart down there, they'd have to set it up. Sometimes you had sound, sometimes you didn't. Uh, now you simply walk in, you press a button, the screen drops down, the long throw projector automatically starts up in the old, uh, what was that, the old? It's like an old movie projector. It's like a box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's about 100 feet away. Oh, the um, projection books. Yeah. Projection oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So the screen automatically comes down, projector pops on, you set up a laptop, you plug in one cable, and you're off and running. Uh, we had to collaborate with Mr. Snyder because he was... Uh, Stuck, he loved his old setup, which was a little wheel out audio. <laughs> Mr. Perry put it together. Yes, Mr. Perry put it together a few years ago, or many years ago. It's, that's, yeah. We've debated that a little bit. So he wheels it out, and he used to just plug one cable in, and he'd use everything right in that cart. Wireless microphones. Wireless microphones. It actually is a really great setup. So we made that even easier for him. And uh, he can still wheel it out and one cord, and he's off and running, and he has his wireless mics and everything. So he's happy, which means we're happy. <laughs> Kelly's happy, and this is hard and everyone at Townsend. So that's very important. But I think that's great over there, because now anyone can do it. Even if the technology team isn't there, they can show movies and do all that stuff. They do Friday fun nights. They do tons of great stuff. Bigger screen, clearer picture, phenomenal Bose system. The sound is incredible. Um, looking forward to the first thing. First show. Uh, number two is the Townsend Doors. 
many of you know, especially you, Kevin, and all you guys on that committee, <laughs> the back doors of Townsend are just, they're a disaster. You can push them open. You can probably yank them open. Half the time they don't work. The new door access control doesn't work. Our side of it does with the software and the cards. The door latches, hinges, they're so old, they work every other time. So Day Automation, who actually installed the door access control, is going to, at their cost, replace all the brake bars, all the, all the hinges, all the latches. Uh, they're adding a center um, bar, so you can't push the bottoms of the doors in, you can't pull them out, and it's at their cost. They didn't have to do this, and it's, it's going to be a big bill, and they're going to replace all four in the back, not the actual door, but all the hardware to make them work. And then the door access control should work 100%. And that's, uh, I'd like to thank Day Automation because that, that's, that's great for Walton because we don't have $20,000 to do that. Um, then we'll move to this week where uh, I got my first experience of a fire drill. So I'd like to thank you guys because <laughs> Mr. Dupra and myself and Mr. McMullen uh, led them out Tuesday on a fire drill. We evacuated everyone at a pretty decent time. It took about two minutes. Um, we didn't bring everyone back as quickly. It took about 13 minutes. But we worked through those issues and we got back inside. John was a big help. Today we had our second fire drill. We evacuated in like a minute and a half, got everyone in in eight minutes. So I, I feel much better and more secure about it because things went a lot more fluidly. So it was rough the first one, but I'm, I'm getting, <laughs> getting warmed up. We have a shelter in place tomorrow afternoon at 2.45. Uh, all the kids will gather in the gymnasium around the side walls, and we'll release them around the same time they normally get out, so Tracy's bus schedule won't be uh, altered. Um, we're not required to by law, but it's good to have one in anyways. Um, and then on to something a little more important, live streams. We've live streamed the last two football games, thanks to Ron Golly. Um, and we're actually going to live stream Saturday's game. So I'd like to thank him for reaching out to us. And we made the time and we've actually had a thousand views on one of the games. Mm -hmm. We've had over a hundred people watching every game, commenting from Nashville to India, Texas. I know Tracy watched it. That um, was very nice because um, <clears throat> you don't know where a lot of students have gone to and all of a sudden it pops up and, you know, hey, I'm in, um, I forget where um, the one student was, uh, Korea? He was China? somewhere overseas. Yeah, and I'm like, yep. oh my gosh, that's where you are. <laughs> you know, But that was very nice. Yeah, I wasn't as big a proponent comments. for it because I thought you want to get people in the seats. There's people that can't come and most of the people that actually watched were out of state. Mm -hmm. yep. And seeing the comments, I played on that field 48 years ago. I told my wife, I was like, we have to do as many as we can. So we're doing this Saturdays. Um, I'd like to thank my son. My 11-year-old just had a birthday. He was actually the cameraman for this last uh, football game for a half. He did a very good job. So <clears throat> we're going to continue that. And I'm looking at ways to automate them um, in the future. So that should make things easier and that's pretty much it for the last two weeks any questions no that's good all right thank, thank you thank you much. so mike don't tell anybody but i can't tell which group does a more fun report <laughs> <laughs> You know it's awesome. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. nice going. All right. Um, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, we just finished uh, finding a, uh, um, a Dignity for All Students uh, 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 coordinator, and we'll be bringing that name for approval um, at the next board meeting. It was like today that we were able to get uh, that squared away. A um, couple quickies uh, from from me. These guys have mentioned a lot of stuff already, um, and Jane mentioned, you know, with the with the links and that sort of thing. So, um, I did uh, go to the um, Mid State Athletic Association com uh, not co the, the conference meeting, first meeting, 
uh, with Justin as the new AD and got to meet folks and um, supported him through that. Um, Bus Driver Appreciation Day we did the other day. That was wonderful. And if anybody does want to see, I don't have Rosie's poem on my phone, but I do have the first song on my poem. Uh, I didn't, or on my phone. I didn't do the second one. Um, So if you would like to see that. Um, uh, After I talked to Justin, we talked about, you know, the, 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 the expanding our list of chaperones, needing to do that and being prepped for winter sports and things like that. So he and I and and Mark Dupra and John sat down and we brainstormed a um, um, the creation of a tip sheet for chaperones. That is, you know, uh, something that they can look at and say, this is what I need to do. These are where the places I need to be. Make sure you've got your your radio and wearing your tag and some little stuff like that, but stuff that becomes important when you're when you're uh, out there doing that and how long, when to get here and how long to stay, those kinds of things. So um, so we've got that all made up and we're in the process of getting that ready to distribute. Um, uh, um, so uh, all these folks that you approved today, they're going to get a copy of that. So they've got that. OK. Um, I did last, I can't remember now, Corey, if it was last week or what, I did go up to uh, Delhi to talk with the civil service folks about um, some of our civil service situations and to get a sense of where we were in terms of getting our paperwork done and things of that sort. I have to tell you, they were very complimentary at our progress and what the, the things that we knew were, were, were late, that we've come along very, very well with those in, in, in their opinions. Um, and um, hats off to Jamie Aubin, who has been doing a lot of the uh, uh, paperwork for us and, and, and with us. So uh, we still have a couple little things, but uh, we're really, according to them, we're moving along very well. And that was good to hear. Um, we do have a, a shared decision making committee that is uh, required. Um, every uh, to, to always have, but this is a year where we have to take another look at our plan. Uh, every two years, you have to take a look at that plan, get it resubmitted to state ed. And according, I went through the, the current plan, and according to that, there are supposed to be two members from the Board of Education on that, on that group. And I have um, I have communicated with uh, the other building principals and uh, with regard to membership and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, um, we do need to have two board members, and you could certainly either decide that now or uh, another time. I think our first meeting is going to be mid-November. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so we've got, you, you, I think you have the next meeting. Uh, and in addition to that, in addition to that, I have had uh, monthly meetings with uh, the leadership of the um, Walton Teachers Association. Uh, we've had, um, you know, they mostly they've come to me with, with things that they have of, of concern. Um, and, um, and, and it's all been very legitimate concern at this point, in my opinion. Um, the, one of the things that they requested the other day was to resurrect um, the uh, what was known as the Educational Policy Committee, and apparently this was something. It's in, it, it is in their collective bargaining agreement, and it is uh, a, a, a group that comes together um, to talk about uh, program formation and program evaluation and things, planning for the future and things like that. And so I've gone out and done some homework on that, and uh, tried to set up a. A list of dates for that. There's no requirement for board members to sit on it. However, according to the collective bargaining agreement, you are invited if you'd like to sit in on it at some point. And I can tell you maybe some of the things as time goes on, what the agenda is going to be. And if you'd like to sit in and on it, then you're, you're welcome to do that. Um, I've also started working, had some initial conversations with Tim about putting together a budget calendar. Um, for the upcoming budget formation season. Um, usually in my world and in the past, <coughs> I've usually started those kinds of activities in December, um, but prepping a calendar and getting that ready in, in, in November um, 
So maybe by the next meeting, I'll have a, a tentative calendar that you can react to. And uh, if I've gone off base, you can correct me <laughs> and put me back on base. Um, those are uh, big points for me. Um, I want to thank everybody who gave presentations tonight and um, support. And uh, again, thank uh, the Board of Education for your support and for the, the, the great work that you do. I know I've enjoyed working with you very much the last couple months. I do have an executive session uh, requested um, for the purpose of uh, talking about specific staff um, people, uh, a couple people, and, um, and also want to give you an update on negotiations. Okay. Well, before we go, um, I want to thank Rick and John and Tracy. Um, I felt that that was very informative, and I know when the principals and the, the rest of the administration give us an update, it gives us a lot of information that we may not typically think of asking at that time, and um, especially, you know, I enjoy when Mike is telling us what the um, elementary school students are doing and what, you know, what's coming up so we can attend. So I thought it was very informative. So thank you very much. And I want to thank administration, you know, all those who presented tonight, Larry and, and the, uh, the public for accommodating our last minute shift uh, with regard to the, the scheduled meeting. Yes. So that was a couple, well, a few people who regularly attend meetings had other obligations that night. And, and, uh, yeah. Thank you. Very important night for us. <laughs> All right, so um, we will need a, an executive session for um, matters relating to particular employees and contract negotiations. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. We need to sign your papers. Um, I didn't know this on the, on the link. Uh -huh.